The six finalists will now compete in dog fights, a head-to-head -head race over five laps on the Stowe circuit. Two drivers start from different points and the first back to their starting block wins. This afternoon is really going to be the decider. This is a duel that will help to determine who wins GT Academy. May battle commence. It's wet, it makes a big difference because the car is always moving around and you're right on the edge of adhesion. Any of the races they do prior even going to Dubai or in Dubai, they might have the same conditions. Three, two, one, go. The first heat sees Chris Midmark in the black 350Z versus Lars Slommer in the silver car. The winners from the next three races will go on to battle it out in the final. The fight is closely contested with both drivers pushing hard, but in the end, it's Sweden's Chris Midmark that steals a second of a lap off Lars and takes the win. The second dogfight sees Luca Lorenzini in a car five battling against the Frenchman Arnaud Lacombe in car two. Both drivers push hard, occasionally falling foul of the slippery elements, but it's Arnaud who starts to crack first. his gears, he's overdriven, he's tried too hard, he's blown it, which is a shame because we thought he was one of the quicker guys here. With Italian Luca going on to the final, there was just one heat left to run. This is the grudge match. This is Lucas versus Fabrice. They're going to battle this out. And if one of them gets the feeling that the other's getting in the way, I guarantee you're going to see fireworks. And this will be the one. Lucas has proved to be the, the original Rainmeister, and Fabrice is driving out of his skin. But you know what? He doesn't have the ultimate finesse that Lucas has. And if you watch Lucas's exit from the corner, he is so efficient to get the power down. I reckon I'd struggle to do a better job than that. Looking at what he's doing out there, he is destroying our longtime championship favorite taking bits and pieces out of his psyche. Despite driving in a commanding style, Ordinez pushes it too far. Driving on the limit means just that. And Lucas discovers it comes at a cost. GT Academy, it's just no, no rest, it's relentless. This gives Fabrice the opportunity to escape, but the undeterred Spaniard simply reapplies the pressure. You know what's interesting, Johnny? It hasn't actually slowed Lucas down. No, no, that's it. good. Now that's a good sign, because that's what a racing driver has to do. Yeah. Put it behind you. Put it behind him, carry on, Focus. do what you're doing before. And that's exactly what he does, and takes first. Ball. Midmark joins Lucas in the final, as does Luca, and to spice up the race, the track has been reversed. The tension is high as the entire GT Academy looks on in anticipation. Three, two, one, go. A wet, slippery track, and the battle is on. Midmark in car two, Lorenzini in four, and in five is the Spaniard Ordinez. Despite the conditions, both man and machine are being put through their paces. Hell's bells. Lucas is so committed into South. Look at that. Even over the water, he's confident enough to carry this. This is Chris. And Chris is being caught by Lucas. Does the Swedish baker have what it takes to hold it together? Look at this. To the eye, you can see the difference now. Oh, he's off. He's off at the top, he's not lost it. That was always going to happen. He has destroyed mentally at this point. Chris Midmark led this championship for so many days. And that is the fastest man in GT Academy just gone by us. Cruel lesson for Medmark as he lost control. Despite the quick recovery, this just can't happen on track in Dubai. All attempts to close in on the Spaniard are pointless as Ordinez takes first with Medmark second. All right. 
done. Well done. Lucas. <laughs> what happened? I'm so close to the limit all the time, so just a little bit of lack of concentration and you have a spin. Uh, easy to do that. Yeah, it is. Consolation is the only thing the judges have to offer as they realise Midmark's performance has severely dented his chances of becoming a GT driver. With the Academy's top racers starting to succumb to the pressure, the final two assessments loom heavy. All the drivers have to drive their hearts out and there's a real mix of emotions amongst the crew as Rob Barr's driving challenge gets underway. Three laps. Nissan GTR. Silverstone circuit. Show me what you got. <laughs> Some laps with the GTR on a wet Silverstone circuit. It's just impressive. Mm. Accompanying the drivers, Barth will assess the six remaining competitors in three key areas, confidence, speed and skill. The drivers don't know it, but Barth is timing all the runs with some surprising results. Lucas drives to the limit, with German Lars very close behind, whilst Midmark has a sedate drive, failing to impress the pro. Very difficult, a lot of pressure with Rob at the uh, right. I'm feeling good. The car was very good. I can drive the car really good. It's my favourite car. <laughs> Before the judges make the final decision on who goes to Dubai, the last six drivers will have one more chance to prove themselves to the panel. Chris, why should the panel choose you for this drive in Dubai? I really want to become a professional race driver and I want to win the biggest race in the world. Last. I have learned a lot in the week and I think I can do more. Thank you. Fabrice. I didn't have anything to do with the last few weeks. I know I can be really better. I've proved it these last days. It's not for the reason that you have to take me to Dubai. Lucas. Racing is my dream. I will try to give my best. 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 With the interviews done, it's crunch time. The judges now have to make the unenviable decision on which two competitors' lives will be transformed forever, taking them from gamer to pro GT driver. We knew it was going to be hard. I had no idea it would be this difficult. Rob, um, we started the day with a drifting exercise. Arno came out very well. Très bien. Je suis très heureux de ma journée, malgré qu'il y ait des petits points où je pense que j'aurais pu être meilleur. Je suis dans l'ensemble très très content de ma journée. On the 350Z kind of dogfight scrap that we had this afternoon, Lucas dropped the ball in the heat stage and was bloody lucky to make it through to the final. Oh. So we know he's a lucky yeah. driver. <laughs> I mean, That's that can come in handy. Yes. The chances uh, that they have to win uh, are high, but. Uh, it's difficult to say. Let's talk about Chris, right? Because for so much of GT Academy, he's been on the leaderboard. But there's some question today, after today, whether he's got a head for the job. Everything we can evaluate and measure with him, with his head, is great, apart from this one thing of his perfectionism. It's a classic that a perfectionist struggles with that one problem against them becomes a bigger problem, amplifies the problem and really falls away, cracks under pressure. I have been at the top from start start of day one to to the end, so I think I'm I'm in the top. I have a chance, good chance. You say he cracks under pressure, but he's a racer. Mm. In any situation where he's put in a racing competitive situation, he's up there and he always performs. He either wins or he was second. I think he's plateaued. Top of his curve. Yeah, Absolutely. I think he's Absolutely. yeah. Finally then, so what about a Teutonic taxi driver, Rob? He scored nine out of 10 confidence. His skill level I've got as excellent. And my comments, bearing in mind we're trying to choose a GT driver, he's kind on the car with no bad habits. He's got good car control. Rob, too. he's kind to his opposition too. He let the other guy in the dogfight beat him. Nobody uh, can say uh, I win or I win not. Uh, we have all the same uh, chances. We're trying to refocus and think about the names on this sheet of paper and the vinyl graphics on the side of the car in Dubai, I think one of them has got to be him. Yeah. Well, no argument about him. The second one's harder. OK. You started off, Rob. Right there. Mike. I'm going to go 
for the same man because he's impressed me right. a lot. I'm utterly happy to have him on board as well. And I think he'd be a great ambassador for yeah. all of us. The <laughs> team get two stunning drivers for Dubai. <laughs>